Ladies and gentlemen, this is a beautiful story, and it says something about today's society. Well, it says something about the media that isn't very good. When you have a bunch of petulant, malicious, megalomaniacal narcissists who whose only goal is to undermine Trump, even at the expense of the welfare and the health of American citizens, you get this story that completely, um, completely refutes and undermines the maniacal frenzy of Democrats when it comes to President Trump and chloroquine and hydrochloroquine. Now, President Trump never stated it's an absolute cure. He said, hey, um, if you look, there are benefits. There are benefits in China and France. And here you have malaria drug helps uh, vi virus patients improve in small study. This is the New York Times. So malaria drug helps patients improve in small study. Quote, this is the New York Times the other day. A group of moderately ill people were given hydrochloroquine, which appears to ease their symptoms quickly. What is the problem here? What is the problem here? So you have a really beautiful story out just a couple hours ago. And it's a Democratic lawmaker. You could just type in Dem lawmaker. Just type in <laughs> on, on, on Google hydrochlor or Dem lawmaker life hy hydrochloroquine. Michigan Democratic lawmaker describes how Trump's boosting of hydrochloroquine um, saved my life. So a Democratic Michigan state lawmaker has credited, has credited President Trump's publicizing of the anti-malarial drug hydrochloroquine with saving her life after her health plummeted when she contracted. Um, okay, State Representative Karen Witsit of Detroit told the Ingram Angle on Monday that if it wasn't for, pre for Trump pushing the drug through the Food and Drug Administration's approval process for off-label use and touting it repeatedly during his daily press briefings, she may not have made it through the terrible contagion. Quote, I really want to say that you have to give this an opportunity. She said, for me, it saved my life. I can only go by what it is that I have gone through and what my story is, I, and I can't speak for anyone else. So that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm only speaking for myself. Whitsitt said she went into, the, into home quarantine on March 12th. Uh, she last attended a session at the State House in Lansing, and her health quickly deteriorated the following week. Quote, it took the longest time for me to actually be able to, to get an appointment and getting with my doctor, which was the 18th of March, and then actually getting the test. On March 31st, Wh Whitsitt continued. She tested positive. Okay, and her well-being just plummeted. All right. Then when you look, then she says, it went from headaches being severe to fluid building up in my lungs to sweats breaking out to the cough and my breathing being labored. Okay, it all happened in a matter of hours. When Whitsitt did make it to the hospital, she found, uh, she found out about a state order prohibiting the use of uh, hydrochloroquine. The Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs under Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer had issued the order only for the governor to retract it several days later. Gee, I wonder why she retracted it. It's, it's just the initial, you know, anything Trump says, you have to just, it, it's just repulsive for Democrats. Anything good, even like... Anything to do with Trump, even if it saves lives, is like repulsive to Democrats. And so Whitmer, and by the way, Andrew Cuomo stated, we, we can get to him, we'll get to him later. On, in the beginning of March, he was like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. In, in a tweet, in, there's documents of him saying this, uh, quotes of him, endless quotes here, but we'll, we'll just continue. When, Whit when Whitsitt did make it to the hospital, she found out about a state order prohibiting the use. Okay. Quote, I did have a difficult time even that day obtaining the medication because of an order that was put down in my state, said Whitsitt. And it was, on the, it was on that day, so you can imagine how terrified I was that I had to beg and plead and go through a whole lot to try to get the medication. Okay. Whitsitt says, uh, okay, she... Uh, which said she had she has chronic Lyme disease and had heard of hydrochloroquine, 
but would not have thought of it as a potential uh, a treatment if not for President Trump's briefings. If President Trump had not talked about this, it wouldn't have been something that would be accessible for anyone to be able to get right now, she said, adding that within a few hours of taking her prescription, she was feeling much better. What? Thank God. Adding that within a few hours of taking her prescription, she was feeling much better? Okay. That was one article. Let's go to Newsweek. Dem lawmaker says Trump saved her life by recommending hydrochloroquine. Michigan Democratic State Representative Karen Whitsitt told Fox News host Laura Ingram on Monday that the controversial drug hydrochloroquine... It's not controversial. There's nothing controversial about it. Even the New York Times article said there was not really... Uh, the, the side effects aren't um, like... It's with, without major side effects. Of course, every drug has major side effects for some people. But generally, it's a generally safe drug. Generally. Not giving medic, re, medical recommendation. But Democrats, do you understand? Media... Liberals, Democrats, and it's not even, to the, to the credit of progressives, most are not like this. But the liberals, the, 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 the I'm with her crowd, the people who will vote Democrat no matter what, those people, they have such contempt for President Trump. They view him to be the biggest monster that ever walked this planet. And it's not Trump. It's, the way they view Trump is a reflection of, of who they are inside. And I've come to this conclusion. There are great people, wonderful people, beautiful people, who just can't stand Trump and despise him. Of those people, there's, there's a certain type of person, and it's the base of the Democratic Party, that thinks they're smarter, better, more moral, morally superior, than the average person. And all of those um, viewpoints are unwarranted. <laughs> but when they look in the mirror, they see somebody truly smarter, um, morally superior, and the reality is that in many cases, it's the opposite. It's just a quest for political power that they have. At the end of the day, it's not about morality, good or bad, right or wrong. It's about a quest for political influence that they're losing. They're losing a battle of ideas. And so they've wrapped this battle within a cloak of uh, good versus bad, right versus wrong. These are the people who have jettisoned religion. In, and look, I don't like the televangelist type person of any religion, of any religion that says, if you don't believe me, uh, you know, God is not, you know, if you don't, I know exactly what God's thinking. I don't like that either. But... But liberals have taken the the antithesis of that in a way with the same um, nasty elements of that thought process. They believe they believe that because they're opposing something that makes them justified to engage in any despicable behavior. So if they're going after Trump, if they set him up with with you know a steel dossier, so what? He deserved it. He deserves it. Well, Trump, you know, wants to um, do away with Obamacare. And, uh, you know, the ACA helps people. So anything that we do against Trump is enough. For, first of all, President Trump, compared to Democrats, is bringing home Americans. The biggest issue we face is never-ending military conflict, and he's bringing home Americans. He's, he just signed. No, nobody's talking about it, but there was a peace deal to basically end America's longest-running intervention and military conflict. And this is something that he'll be remembered for forever. And God bless him. Trump is an amazing president, in addition to being the first president to step foot in North Korea. But, you know, God bless this Democratic state representative, Karen Whitsitt. If Hillary Clinton herself took hydrochloroquine, God forbid, I would say, you know, God bless her. You know, if it, if it made her better, great. You know, at the end of the day, look, let me tell you, I, I told, you know this. After President Trump, I love Hillary Clinton more than anyone else. Why? For the same reason I love Darth Vader and Lex Luthor and, uh, you know, Cobra Commander and, and, and Destro and the Decepticons and anything. You could just, any, any villain, you know, just look, um, 
Drago in Rocky IV, whatever. There is there is a very there's an the only one of the, the one of the few admirable qualities that Clinton has, Hillary Clinton, is that she fights. Unlike Bernie Sanders, who pretends to fight and doesn't fight at all. In fact, he oh whatever. Don't don't get me started about Bernie. Oh, I have enough of her emails. Ah, Burisma? No. Oh, why would I bring up Burisma? We're, we're friends. He's my friend. Okay. Michigan Democratic State Representative, this is Newsweek, Karen Whitsett told Fox News host Laura Ingram on Monday that the controversial drug hydrochloroquine stopped her, her, her symptoms within a couple of hours. Why would you, there, there, were already, there was already a study done, and even if there's anecdotal evidence from doctors and hospital and work, work, nurses and workers it's okay to go with anecdotal evidence. Yes, that doesn't mean that it's good for everyone. That's not the point. Malicious. Mali it's the malice. It's the schadenfreude from Democrats. You have to, like, psychoanalyze Democrats. They need it. You're talking about the type of human being who won't speak to a family member, who won't speak to a friend, because the person voted for Trump. They've completely, and, and they're the ones who were like voting for Clinton. Clinton is infinitely worse than Trump on every single major topic. Every single major topic. Oh, you want to talk about climate change? Look at what President Obama did. Largest expansion of domestic oil and gas production. I think, from what I understand, larger than what President Trump is engaging in. But so, you're talking about the just the, the most duplicitous people, but here, just here, Whitsitt represents parts of Detroit, a city that's been labeled uh, a hot spot for this crisis. So, um, Michigan, I believe, is in the top ten, along with Illinois, along with eight of the top ten states that have suffered from this. Eight of the top ten states are um, are democratic, have democratic governors. Gee, I wonder why. Gee, I wonder why. Why why do you think that is? Why do you think that is that eight of the top ten states have Democratic governors? Why do you think that is? Why do you think it is that Andrew Cuomo let's just get to this really quickly. This is a where is that tweet? From Andrew Cuomo. This is a tweet on March first. He literally says there is no reason for undue anxiety. The general risk remains low in New York. How this guy gets a free pass is unbelievable. Then he issues a a uh, a statement where it um he goes. There's no reason for undue anxiety. The general risk remains low in New York. So that's part of a document. And this is on March 1st. No wonder New York is a hot spot. Like, the, he leads the nation. I wonder why Hillary Clinton didn't go, oh, yeah, um, well, New York's number one yet again, just like she did with, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, America first, uh, first, and, you know, whatever. The tweet. By the way, Hillary Clinton's going to be nominee. Did I, I, I might have wasted for, thir uh, spent 13 minutes without saying that. But here, let's go back and... If you look, ladies and gentlemen, if you look, Newsweek, um, used primarily to treat malaria, hydrochloroquine has been praised by President Donald Trump as a potential therapeutic for the virus. Sunday, Trump suggested taking the drug to prevent co uh, contracting the virus. I'm not looking at it one way or the other, but we want to get out of this. If it does work, it would be a shame if we didn't do it early. But we have some very good signs. While the FDA... Yet the FDA has not approved it. So what's the... What, like... People, the, the rebuttal is, well, it's not approved. So what? So what? So it's not approved. If there's anecdotal evidence and you have doctors who can vouch for it, who have stated, yeah, this, the, this has been helping our patients, okay, and this is a worldwide crisis, why don't you then just go ahead and, if you're suffering from this, are you going to wait until uh, Schumer or uh, Cuomo or de Blasio give you the green light? You're gonna wait until MSNBC and CNN says, "Oh yeah, you know what? You know you gotta you gotta continue. You gotta continue with um, you gotta continue with the fevers and and the, and the sweats and all that uh, because you know you haven't. You know, we wouldn't want you to potentially take a medication that could save your life. 
You know, it's because President Trump is it's so it's so. Um, and then they and then one <laughs> there's one lawmaker who wants to take him to the Hague for crimes against humanity for pushing hydrochloroquine. So just because, look, thank God it helped this Democratic lawmaker, Michigan Democratic State Representative Karen Whitsitt. Thank God it helped her. Does it mean it's going to help you, heaven forbid, if you get it? No. Does it mean it will help everyone? No. But does it mean it could help a lot of people? Yes. It is so difficult. The smartest people in the room always, the Democrats are smartest people in the room. You, you, see, the, you see them, the, the, there's certain pundits, I'm not going to bring up their names, the hardcore liberal pundits. They claim to be, they claim to be to the far left, but they're not. They're hardcore liberal pundits. And they think they're the smartest people in the room. And their arrogance is nauseating. But at the end of the day, they lost to President Trump. And President Trump is a lot better of a politician, of a leader, of a human being than these people are. Like, you talk about what type of a human being. Like, you, President Trump... Tells people, go ahead, try hydrochloroquine. It works. In, it's been working uh, for doctors in China and in France. And there's a study done. The New York Times even cited. Conversely, President Obama drinks Flint water in a shameful publicity stunt. He actually drank poisonous water with high levels of lead that 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 cause major major health uh, issues. And he drank the water before it was safe to drink. And then he said, well, you know, this is a filtered, this is filtered water. How much you want to bet he didn't drink that water? So when people say, oh, President Obama's a good human being, ask the people of Libya. He destroyed a country in a NATO intervention. Ask those people how great of a, of a person President Obama is. Ask those people if he's a fantastic human being. What about Hillary Clinton? We can go on. I mean, that we don't have to even talk about. She'll be the nominee. She'll lose again. But if she, she will win if you don't tell people to vote. So that's that's another thing. I'm beyond Clinton's going to be the nominee. I'm the only person on planet Earth who's been saying this. I am the only person on planet Earth who said Hillary Clinton's going to be a nominee For, since 2017. Since, since 2017, I'm the only person. But um, now it's Clinton could possibly win if you do not vote for President Trump. But here, this is a Newsweek article. Dem lawmaker says Trump saved her life by recommending hydrochloroquine. Um. This, is, this article is by Jeffrey Martin, Newsweek. There are other articles as well. God bless Michigan Democratic State Representative Karen Whitsitt. Hey, this is beyond politics. Saving lives is beyond politics. If you can save a life by taking hydrochloroquine or chloroquine, which has been around forever, and then you have these, these, um, these naysayers, like, it's, it's, it's so irresponsible. It's like, no, it's not. It's already being used. It's already being used. Does it mean it'll help everyone? No. Who cares? But Democrats, President Trump, first president to step foot in North Korea. Ah, it's a photo op. President Trump had record low unemployment. That's President Obama's economy. Now now you have millions unemployed. That's President Trump's economy. Uh, we found out he didn't work with Russia. How do we know? In the articles of impeachment, this is how we know that the whole Russia thing was complete and nonsense. The articles of impeachment didn't even list the obstruction of justice accusation. So, the, and nothing to do with Russia or contacts or the Trump Jr. meeting. The articles of, of, of impeachment were um, uh, simply obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. These are subjective things. The, not the, Cl Bill Clinton was impeached based on legal statutes that he broke. Legal statutes that he broke. Okay? So, um... Trump not impeached on legal statutes. Le on, impeached on, oh, well, he, he withheld military assistance because he went after Biden. How do we know? Because somebody who worked in John Brennan's agency um, blew the whistle on Trump. It's like, <laughs> at a certain point, William Barr and John Durham have to save the country. Th this is not hyperbole. That's not hyperbole. That's not, you, you, William Barr and John Durham, if they do not save the country from this, we, we will not... Um, we will not be able to have a functioning, not just democracy, but a functioning country, a functioning state. You cannot have unelected officials who are wrong since 
Pearl, from Pearl Harbor to the Bay of Pigs to the Gulf of Tonkin to George W. Bush and Rumsfeld and Cheney's failed foreign policy predicated upon uh, intelligence failures to now Facebook ads. You cannot have these people who are always dreadfully wrong now injecting themselves within U.S. politics, within domestic politics. You can't have that. You can't have that. You can't have them setting up and framing incoming uh, candidates because uh, of foreign policy differences and then tying their foreign policy to some kind of global plot to undermine a private entity in the DNC. Okay, you can't, you can't have a functioning country like this. So now, and, and now you're finding out, by the way, how they feel about um, believing people uh, pertaining to allegations to Joe Biden. So give me your thoughts below. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. Subscribe to HR Goodman's other channel right this second. If you want to support my Patreon, that is below. Thank you.